Today I wanted to do a video on how to care for this Alocasia nicolitsiana, which is this plant right here. This is an amazing Alocasia with super velvety leaves, also commercially known as the Alocasia green velvet or the Alocasia phrytic. So this is a fantastic Alocasia specimen, I've got to say it's one of my favourites because of its uh, sagittate leaves, that amazing dark green foliage, plus this really bright white veining. Guys, this is this is a very beautiful plant. Um, it's one of my favourite alocasias. I don't know how many times I've said it, but I just it's perfect. It's literally a perfect plant. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you can see, but I'll show you. Um, I'll show you on its stems. It's got these amazing uh, zigzaggy patterns. So it's got these little faint lines, which I think are common for a lot of alocasias. So this plant is native to Southeast Asia, specifically originating from the Philippines. It is a tropical plant, so it likes those warm, humid um, temperatures. But this guy now, I think you, you can see him in a lot of plant stores around the world. So I'm very pleased that you know I've been able to pick one up uh, for myself. In nature, it can get up to anywhere between 60 to 90 centimeters tall in height and 60 to 90 centimeters wide. So it can get quite a tall plant. I think mine's just about 30 centimeters tall. I got mine about a year ago and I think it's over a year. It's It, it firstly started off with just one leaf and then over the year, it's given me these four beautiful leaves. This plant is toxic to pets, so if you do have pets, I'll be doubly careful not to let your cat or your dog nibble on it because it can cause some stomach problems for your pet. This plant does go dormant over winter, like most alocasias, where it gets a bit too cold, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that a bit later. So guys, in terms of care, the first tip I have is around lighting. This guy likes indirect light, so keep him away from from direct light. I keep him outdoors so he's he sits beneath some of my bigger plants so he gets dappled lighting um, during the day. He doesn't get any direct afternoon light but he gets direct morning light so you want some nice um, ambient lighting for this plant. If you're keeping him indoors, east and south uh, wasting, uh, waste. <laughs> south facing windows are the best otherwise if you've got west or north facing windows just keep him a little bit further away from the direct sunlight. Um, he does need a little bit more light over winter so if he is still growing in winter and hasn't go, gone into dormancy make sure to give him a lot more light in winter as well. This is a plant that also his leaves will turn depending on where the light source is coming so if you don't want your plant to be a little bit lopsided make sure to rotate your plant as well. So this guy he gets light pretty much all around so he's quite I guess quite evenly spread. I personally don't mind if plants become a little bit more lopsided. I actually think it gives them a bit more character but of course different people like their plants to look a bit differently, have different aesthetic preferences. In terms of soil for this guy, I like to keep him in a mixture of orchid bark, perlite and potting mix. You want to make sure it's fast and well draining because with pests for this guy, root rot is probably a bigger concern for this plant. So you want to make sure that his soil is, sorry, <laughs> sorry mosquitoes. You want to make sure that his soil is quite uh, moist and well draining. In terms of fertilizing, I fertilize this guy uh, every two weeks using a diluted synthetic fertilizer. Synthetic because that's the fertilizer I have uh, recently been using. Make sure that the fertilizer is diluted. So in winter you don't want to fertilize this plant because it's probably going into dormancy and it's not going to give you that much growth. In terms of repotting for this plant, as with most alligators, they tend to like to be a little bit more root bound. So 
So I've still got him sitting in his pot that he came in with one leaf. I would think that next uh, spring and summer, because we're getting into autumn now, I would then repot him into a bigger pot and then hopefully he'll grow a lot more. Um, I would say the reason why you want to um, keep him a little bit more root, round, uh, root bound uh, for alocasia is one, because they prefer to be a little bit more root bound. But if you put him in a bigger pot, the soil will take a little bit longer to dry out. And we know with alocasias, root rot is a concern. So that's another reason why with alocasias, you prefer to keep him in smaller pots and so rather than bigger pots because then that gives the soil to have more opportunity to dry to dry out. In terms of propagation then for this plant, uh, I, this plant is still too small to be propagated but when you do propagate him, a good rule of thumb is to make sure there's at least two to three leaves for each section of the tuber. This is uh, quite a um, a plant with big rhizomes or tubers and to propagate it you want to you want to separate the tuber so you're actually uh, I guess breaking or cutting through the plant's um, root system and uh, for good propagation make sure to have at least two to three roots attached to that uh, tuber section that you're you're cutting off when you do decide to cut off um, that tuber one thing to be super um, mindful of is protecting your plant against um, bacterial root rot because your root has been damaged through the act of um, cutting it for propagation so you just want to make sure that the soil that you put in, um, in is well draining you've got some charcoal in there to minimize the root rot I do have a, I think in my alocasia video, I've got a section on taking care of your plants, your alocasias, to cure your plants from root rot. So I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to link it there. In terms of humidity for this plant, this is a plant um, like most alocasias, prefers high humidity. And a lot of tips I've seen out there for increasing humidity is to spray the leaves. But uh, as you might know, I'm, I don't really like to spray water on my plants. The reason for that is because I just get worried that if the um, if the water doesn't have time to evaporate off the leaves, then that makes the leaves susceptible to rot. And so that's a big reason why I don't like to uh, spray my plants to increase the humidity. What I tend to do is I keep my plants clustered, so they're really close together, and I do keep my plants outside. So. Um, for example, yesterday it did rain, so it's it's probably got a bit more water around it already. And because it's been close to other plants, I'm hoping that it's quite a warm environment um, for this plant. Of course, if you have a greenhouse and it's got a lot of aeration and it's got a humidifier in it, by all means pop your plant in there because I'm sure it will love it a lot. Um, ideal temperatures for this plant is between 18 to 26 degrees Celsius, so I think that's 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. It is, it does like quite warm temperatures and you, over, over summer particularly, you do see it growing a lot more. I did mention, I think at the beginning of the video, that this plant does go dormant over winter. So um, signs of dormancy is, of course, as the seasons change and as it gets quite cold, you will find your plant either not throwing out a lot of leaves or it starts to yellow. And so in that case, it might not have any leaves. When this plant does go into dormancy and you do see its leaves and stems start to wilt, I do start to trim back on those dying leaves. The reason for that is I find when this plant dies back, its stems does get a bit mushy or its dying stems will get a bit mushy. And I don't want that to jeopardize the health of the remaining um, stem. I don't want the moisture from the dying stem to rot the other stem. So when it does go dormant, you want to reduce your watering by a lot over winter. So a rule of thumb I like to apply is because I keep my plant outdoors, I will probably water it once every three to six weeks, depending on how dry it gets over winter. Sorry, mosquito again. Guys, I can't help noticing. Look how beautiful the leaves are. So pretty. Wow. When your allocates your goes into dormancy you still want to keep your tuber wet because it's there's still life that's happening you don't want to let the soil dry out because in the spring it should hopefully grow back again in case your tubers over winter you also want to make sure that they don't rot so that's a really important reason why you want to reduce your watering over winter I had also a couple of questions in my alocasia video about noticing some leaves of your alocasia 
crying. So that's when the leaves get a lot mushy and you start to see droplets forming. That is a way for the plant to get rid of excess water. So it's a sign that your allocation is having too much water, particularly over winter, and it's just trying to get rid of as much water um, as possible. Now from my experience, unfortunately when that has happened to my alocasias, particularly where I've kept them indoors, my plant doesn't tend to survive. I see that symptom so I think that's a really big reason why over winter definitely trying to reduce the watering. So make sure you keep an eye on the watering schedule for your plant and um, yeah, you don't, you don't get them crying. <laughs> From a maintenance perspective, we've touched on root rot. That's a really big concern for alocasias and indeed for this alocasia friday. You want to make sure that your alocasias don't dry out too much, particularly because they get a lot thirstier during growing season. So when you see your plant coming up with a new leaf, that's definitely a sign you should up your watering because it's super thirsty when it's producing a new baby. So definitely up the watering when you see it's um, getting a new baby. I can't see any new babies for this guy, so he's probably not pregnant. The other thing to keep in mind for pests is I've heard spider mites and mealybugs are the biggest pests for this plant. I haven't thankfully experienced that with this guy, but you want to be mindful that when you do spot particularly mealybugs to address them right away. You don't want them to be preying on your plant or making your plant weak. Guys, I think I've covered um, all the care tips I have for the Alocasia mitzelitziana uh, or the Alocasia green velvet or the Freidic. Guys, it is just a spectacular Alocasia. Um, definitely one to have in your collection. It's probably one of my favorite Alocasias. Just the leaves are so beautiful. Guys, if you do have any questions about this plant, please feel free to drop me a line, drop me a comment, but I will see you in my next video. Bye.